And then the one I did land, the, the 19 and a half pounder, that I got first, I got him right over there. Hi, it's William. Welcome to Flyspoke. And in the vise, I have um, a bunny tail fly. And they're extremely, extremely uh, uh, good flies to have uh, w when you're trout fishing or steelhead fishing. Because there's so much action in the tail, the fish can't seem to resist it. But the problem with the fly is the fish will come up and they'll nip that tail. And they won't get anywhere near the hook. So, um, I've developed this way of uh, gluing in a hook as a stinger all the way into the back of the bunny strip so that in the very back of that bunny strip you have uh, you have your hook and you can put a small hook in and elongate be able to elongate the length of the bunny strip so you're getting wiggle from all the way up here and that tail is literally vibrating and um, uh, I find it to be highly effective, and I'm going to show you how to uh, how to tie that uh, this system right now. Okay, the first thing I'm going to do with this fly is I'm I'm using a this uh, mustad uh, mustad egg hook, and it is uh, size 10. And basically, um, we're going to be gluing the hook into the fly, so. I'm going to be just putting down a thread wrap and then what you want to do is any color you want to add because remember most of the time a fish is going to be looking up and at the back of the fly so any little flash color or anything you want to put into this fly we're going to put to the hook so I'm just going to put a thread wrap And then my choice on this one is going to be just a, uh, a strand of a mylar of a mylar that's going to give it a little sparkle. So because I'm going to use a gold bead on the front of this, I'm simply going to take a little bit of this gold holographic mylar, tie it in at the back. Let's tie to the front. Spin it on. Just one one thickness is all you need. Pull it kind of tight, but not too tight, because if you stretch it, it tends to lose the holographic look to it. I just uh, smoothed it down with my finger. Sometimes the mylar um, tends to stick up on the edges. Pull back. And we're just going to tie this off right here. You know, this would also be the time if you were to put in any kind of crystal flash or anything with strands strands out the back. This would be the uh, the appropriate time to do that. And I'm just going to tie this off. Dab a head cement. And that'll smooth out nicely. And I'm going to go ahead and remove this from the vise for now. Okay, there are a, a few different ways to achieve what we're going to do next. And this is a product here, um, fish skull item. It's an articulated shank, but uh, this is the larger size, and they do make them shorter. But what I find is the eye is way too large, and uh, the diameter of the wire is way too large for trout flies. These are great for bigger steelhead flies. Same issue, Waddington shanks, partridge Waddington shank. You can create a similar 
uh, uh, situation, making a stinger with the Waddingtons. But again, very heavy wire, uh, big loops, just doesn't, doesn't work for trout. So what I do is I'm taking two size 8, 4X long uh, shank streamer hooks. And I take one of them, and I've already snipped them, and I've polished the end a little bit. And I'll put one in the vise perpendicular. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take some Loctite 414. And the one, this one here on the outside, this one's going to become the one that is used for uh, tying your tippet to. So that one, I'm going to take a bead before we join these together. I'm just going to take an appropriately sized uh, um, gold color bead and just put that on the front. Okay, and this now I'm going to want to be horizontally placed. So we have a perpendicular shape in the back and we're going to mount this these hooks together and I'm simply going to take a little bit of Loctite 414 and I'm going to take the I'm going to take this basically Loctite 414 is super glue and I'm just going to put a very little bit onto the shank of the under hook And then I'm going to take the shank with the bead on it. Okay, now without waiting too long, Loctite is, can even be still a little bit wet. So long as you have everything perfectly aligned, we can start wrapping a little bit of thread around it. Now you just have to make sure the edges of the of the shank of the hook is not too sharp, because they will easily easily cut your thread. So when you go over these spots, just just be loose with the thread. And what we're going to do is we're going to just keep covering until it's covered. It'll make a slight ramp in the back and a slight ramp in the front. But just depending upon how much work you do to them before you join them together will determine how smooth they are. Now I'd like to have a little shank like this just made by a hook company even I think it would be a tremendous uh, a tremendous little thing to have to be able to make stingers um, so if there's any hook companies out there who want a little gimmick item um, this is certainly it for and you could call it the stinger shank just uh, send the royalties to Flyspoke LLC please Well, basically, all I've really created is a Waddington shank made from light wire. And now, on that, I'm going to simply tie it off. It's covered enough. I'm going to tie it off right there. And I'm going to lock tight it one more time. And I know that I've created a shaft. Loctite it and just take a just take a toothpick, spread it out like that, make it go all around. And just now let that dry. Okay, so um, pretty dry, 
And what we're going to do is we are going to go back to, I'm going to take this out of the vise, and we're going to go back to the to the hook. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take a 30 pound test piece of Kevlar. Very strong, very flexible. It's not going to chafe and, and rub and break. Very, very durable material. And basically what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put a loop over that holographic tinsel covered hook we made. And then just go through the eye and then just go up and over the back of the hook. Just like that. Pull it tight. And basically, here we go, we have the hook. You can even see the Kevlar is, has some st stiffness to it to stand it out, but yet it'll bend anywhere. It really is malleable stuff. Okay, so now I'm going to go back to the hook shank, and I'm just going to put it in the vise so that the hole is still... Um, accessible okay and I'm going to separate the two pieces of the Kevlar and the one on the far side I'm going to pass through the hole of the hook towards me and the one on the near side I'm going to pass through the hole in the hook to the opposite side okay pretty simple and just e equal tension pull them forward like that until they're about in the place where I the length that I'm going to want this fly to be so what we're going to be doing is we're going to be taking this bunny strip and we're going to be putting the bunny strip the end of it right where the hook is so that the stinger is in the very back of the tail because so many times the fish will just nip the tail so now I'm gonna just put a knot right here I've judged my distance and now I'm gonna put just a single overhand knot into both strands of the Kevlar just like that and I'm going to make sure that that knot stays in the midsection of the shank just like that. It's a little bit forward but that's okay as long as it's anywhere in the shank always use your heavy-duty poor quality scissors to cut things like Kevlar and wire Okay. All right. So now I'll put that in the vise a little better. Hooks dangling out the back. Just leave it alone. It's okay. Just let it hang there. And we're going to go back and put our tying thread on. So I can start right in the front. We're going to tie our fly now. We've created our hook system, and it's now time to tie the fly. A lot of work to create the hook system, but I believe well worth it. Okay, so now if I tie right over that knot that I created, there's no possible way for that to pull out. If you want, you can go ahead and uh, put some Loctite on it again, and there's no possible way for it to come out. So let's just run up the shank. We'll cover over the knot now. It's okay, this fly doesn't, you don't have to worry about that, uh, that not being there. And just cover over the knot. And go to the back. 
Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is I cut this piece off a, off a rabbit skin, make sure the direction of the hairs is all to the back, and just go ahead and judge where it's going to go so that the hook isn't going to place in the very, very back. When we glue the hook, it's going to place in the very, very back of the leather part of the rabbit skin. Now you just wet this a little to keep it down for yourself. And we're just going to tie in the tail. Make sure it's laying on straight. off here. And I'm just going to neaten this entire body section. All right. And now we're just going to put a rib. So let's stick with the let's stick with the gold theme. We can uh, Take a little bit of gold tinsel. You can take a little bit of gold holographic. And if you think the fly needs to be real flashy, then go with the holographic. If you think you want to stay somber, just use some wire, even black wire, something simple. So I'll throw in a holographic that I'm going to use as a rib set that down around the bottom and for the back of the fly I'm just going to use some pretty bushy dubbing Angora would be good or, um, and anything sparkly I mean you can get really creative with the colorations of these things but Sometimes the somberest it can be in all black works the best. Fly is good in brown, it's good in olive. And I'm just taking this dubbing, winding it around the thread, bringing it forward. just take my toothbrush and give it a little brushing make it make it be a little bit on the hairy sides all right okay now just pull forward wrap push back pull forward a little bit closer up, wrap, and push back. And then grab it a little further forward, wrap, push back. And there's your rib. And like I say, that can be wire. You want some real durability. Alright, next thing I'm going to do is I'm simply going to take some, this is a um, mirror crystal, mirror crinkle flash, two strands in peacock black. It's kind of the same coloration as you would do for a flashback pheasant tail. I'm folding it in half. And then I'm folding it in half again and folding it in half another time. Now I'm going to tie it in. This is going to be the wing casing. So I'm going to tie it in 50-50 right in this spot. 
draw it back so it's all facing back and just cover over. Okay? And then I'm going to go back to the dubbing. Grab a bunch of the dubbing and I'm going to make a pretty pretty bushy thorax. Wrap it around. All right. Grab all your all your flash on the flashback. Draw it forward. Put it on and make sure it's all on the top. And grab it. And first, I'm going to make a crisscross here right to the behind the where the flashback went in and I'm going to pull the wing casing back over the top set it in on the top and then I can just trim off that excess there Crisscross to the front, right at the bead. Um, and I'm going to take some uh, black mallard. You can use pheasant tail, black pheasant tail, black mallard. I'm just going to put in a few legs on each side. Sort of gives it a buggy look, but half bug, half sculpin. And put this in similar length to the other side. Just a V of legs. And we'll trim that out. And then just a tiny little bit more of the dubbing. Wrap around the front. And I'll tie that off. Take your toothbrush, just take your brush and give that a little brush to pull out the fibers. puffs it up a little bit. Okay, and so the last thing we have to do is we're going to attach the hook with the glue to the to the rabbit. And just wet it a little bit. And all I have to do is put the hook back in the shank, lift up like that, Put a little bit of the Loctite right on the hook and pull forward on the fly nicely, nice and tight. And lay it right down the center. Now I'm bending it down, I'm actually folding it onto the top of the hook so that the bunny strip folds a little bit. Okay.
there it is and that's basically the fly and that believe it or not is not going to move that hook out of there and what you wind up with is you wind up now if I wanted I can even make this if you look at the back here I could even make this closer if I wanted to shorten the shorten the bunny strip and uh, when I produced it I could have made the length of the Kevlar a little bit longer and put the hook back so you can vary that tremendously as to uh, what variation uh, you'd like to have with uh, hook placement but putting the hook in the back like that instead of it being on a streamer hook and basically being all the way up this close um, tremendous difference on on uh, uh, how many fish uh, you get to hook with these flies so uh, basically um, that's the wild one stinger there it is